So this is three weeks exactly from my PDT procedure. I have washed my face, but I have absolutely nothing on. I have no sunscreen, no, I don't even have chapstick on. So I wanted you to see what my skin looks like. Um, it's still, as you can see, where I had the primary, you know, like most affected area is still kind of pink. I am in general still kind of pink, but I think over the next couple of weeks, this will really settle down. Okay, so again, this is week three, and I wanted to show you the three sunscreens that I am currently using, and they range in price from super duper expensive to very inexpensive, and they all have sort of different features. So I'm gonna talk you through each one, why I like them, why they chose them, and when I use them. So my most favorite sunscreen is this Isden, and it's called, uh, it's French, so it has it's hard to pronounce. Isdin Photo, I-S-D-I-N. Um, gosh, I can't even pronounce this. You look at it. I don't want to say it and say it wrong. But essentially, the reason why I this is my favorite is because this is a zinc oxide sunscreen. This is 17% zinc oxide. My dermatologist recommends, I believe it's at least 6% zinc oxide, and that's like her favorite thing. This is like 70 bucks. This is the most expensive thing I have in my entire skincare routine, which is extremely simple. We're talking Dove soap, CeraVe moisturizing cream, Aquaphor for my lips. I do have an eyelash serum that I use, but I, I'm starting to just now introduce very, very gently and slowly retinols and vitamin C. I have historically found my skin to be too sensitive for that, but my dermatologist has told me to use retinols literally for the last 20 years, and every time I try them, I'm like, I don't like it, it's too, it's too rough. So I'm going very slow, and it's not prescription, I'm just doing it over the counter to make it even more gentle, but once a week for one week, twice a week for two weeks, three times a week for three weeks, and so on. We'll see how that goes. But anyway, back to this sunscreen. This is ultimately the one that I reach to the most. It ha it's an emulsion, so you have to shake it. And it's very liquidy. Like, it's, it's very liquidy. If you have darker skin, it's probably going to leave a little bit of a white cast. And it's funny because those zinc oxide sunscreens leave almost like a lavender color on dark skin. I am very fair, so that doesn't really happen to me. The second one that I've been using is this one by Cicapair. It's a tiger grass. It's actually green. It's also a zinc oxide product, and it turns to like a skin tone. This is probably the closest thing that I have to, oh, to makeup. Um, I don't like makeup. I don't wear makeup. Um, right now I need to tint my eyelashes and eyebrows. That's a video coming up soon. I'm going to show you how I do like my whole self-care routine. I do it every Friday, actually. I call it Fascia Friday. But this is a more matte type of sunscreen. I usually actually mix it with another sunscreen because, again, I don't like makeup, so I don't like the way it feels and I don't want it to be, I don't want it to be visible on my skin in any way because that's just my personal preference. I want my own skin to be showing. So I never, ever, ever, I don't even own foundation that's just something I don't enjoy. I actually only own like two pieces of makeup, so. And then this is the other one. This is the only chemical sunscreen I currently use. Uh, it has avabenzone in it, which is, from what I understand, in America, the restrictions on UV filters is much more stringent, and so it takes a long time for them to get approved. And to be a UVA filter, avobenzone, I believe, currently in the US is one of the better ones. There's some in, that are used in Korea, Japan, France that are supposed to be really great, but you can't buy them in American stores. You have to buy them on online stores. But this one is called, it's made by ELF, which is so funny. And this is called Woe Glow. So it has like this glowy bit to it. So right now where my skin is still kind of red. Oh, I don't know what that is. It's, who knows? Um, but my skin is still sort of red and healing from this process. So probably in the next week or two, it'll probably be back to normal. I am going to choose, maybe I'll do a mixture of all three. Let's try. So I'm going to take a little blob boop, of the glowy stuff the e.l.f. will glow. I'll take a little tiny blob of the green stuff, the Cica pear, and a little tiny blob of the Isden Actinica, whatever, whatever. So I'm going to mix them together, and I do not do anything fancy. 
because I don't want to miss anything. So I'm just going to rub it in. I even go over my lips, so it's going to make my lips kind of white. And then I can, you know, put on a tinted lip balm if I want to. Don't forget your ears and your neck. This is a whole skin cancer prevention, you know, series video. And that's it. I go right over my eyes. I, I don't want to choose sunscreens that I can't put over my eyes or that will burn when I go in my eyes. That's about the extent of my skincare slash makeup routine. Right now, I would probably put on, I do own a mascara. I do own a little eyebrow thing, and I do own like a lip and cheek tint. I think those are the only three pieces of makeup I own. I am very fair right now on my eyebrows and eyelashes because I am due to tint them. Sorry about the ding. I am going to actually do that in a, in a video coming up so I can show you how I do that because again, I hate to wear makeup so I don't like to wear mascara, I don't like to wear brow stuff, I just kind of want my bare face. And now that I'm 45, I'm just, I'm just owning it. I'm just owning it. And same thing with my gray hairs, I'm owning it. Um, and my, my little chicken pox scar, and I kind of like it. I think it gives my face character. So I have no intention of ever getting rid of my little chicken pox scar on the tip of my nose. I will follow up again in another week or two because I think by then I'll probably be totally healed up. And But I'm, I, I mean, this is fine. I, it's not like I, I don't look like a burn victim anymore. My skin is not coming off in like chunks. I don't have like yeast growth. But you can see where that was. That has remained pretty pink. And I think that's because that skin was traumatized the most. But like most of my skin is looking pretty good. And over the next month or two, there is, you know, some cosmetic benefits of doing this. Obviously, it's like a very deep exfoliation. So at a minimum, it does that. But the lasers themselves help build collagen and elastin. So give me like a little youthful boost, which considering how uncomfortable it is, I'm kind of glad there's some cosmetic benefits. But that's not really the reason I do it. I do it because I don't want skin cancer. And so far, so good. <laughs>